Hello, greetings everyone. I want to show you an exciting game that took place uh, January of 2018. Uh, this is a relatively unknown uh, event. It took place in Russia and it was the uh, Tulia Starodubsev Memorial uh, Tournament. And it was a rapid tournament. Uh, Alexander Morozevich uh, participated uh, among uh, others. It was a 10 round tournament. The time control was uh, 15 uh, minutes with a 10 second time delay. And in this game, I want to show you a game between a player named uh, Peter Titian, a Russian uh, grandmaster, 42 years old. <clears throat> and uh, with the black pieces, uh, Evgeny Vesyukov, uh, 84 years old. Uh, so we have another Iron Man. Uh, uh, Grandmaster here. I know you're familiar with Victor Korsnoy playing basically right up until uh, he couldn't play uh, anymore and players like Vasily uh, Smyslov. Um, but here is uh, Vasyukov with the black pieces and I hope you enjoy this game. Game started out E4. Knight F6. E5. Knight D5. D4, D6, E takes D6, so we have a exchange variation here, and C takes D6. This is the more uh, dynamic option, as opposed to E takes, and now black will just fan kettle here, and play um, like in the fashion of the Sicilian defense with this uh, play on the C file. Here, Titian opts for the rare move G3. Normal, of course, would be C4 going to an exchange uh, variation proper, where after this point there's many different moves. Knight C3, Bishop D3, Knight F3, even the move H3, preventing Bishop G4 um, uh, can be played at this point. But Titian opted for this rare move G3 taking us into some positional waters. There is an old game uh, between uh, Viswanathan Anand and Michael Adams uh, in a similar uh, type line. So this line is not without some poison, although black equalizes. G6, Bishop G2, Knight C7, with the idea of simply uh, controlling this square. <clears throat> idea you see in the English, and also with the idea of playing d5 after uh, knight c7 knight e2 keeping this bishop clear no obstructions in the way <clears throat> um, bishop g7 castle now d5 I thought actually uh, d5 was interesting for white even at this point I thought um, this was an interesting move uh, it's it's more of a positional move a long-term positional move and uh, my argument is that in this position and of course in many other similar type positions in the Sicilian in particular uh, you get this point of d5 and it's very difficult for black uh, positionally uh, it almost forces black on a dynamic path because any movement of this pawn usually lead to a scenario where you know you have these two pawns traded off the D and the E pawn and then black is stuck with this isolani all right had to take that phone call that phone call was important all right <laughs> so back to what we talked about D5 here it, it makes it a little bit difficult if you want to play like in this positional type of game. Of course, black can, you know, play these ideas where, uh, you know, he tries to play, you know, like a Dutch style defense. You know, Bishop G7, of course, castle and play real aggressively. But I like having this pawn on D, D5. It's very annoying as far as the uh, the structure in the future 
is going to be concerned. I love these positional grinds like this. Like if I was white, I probably would have did D5 uh, right away uh, in this situation. You know, just to give an example, like Bishop uh, G7 still would happen 92. Um, let's say castles. Castles. And... Um, Let's play a move like that just so he, so it gets illustrated. And you have ideas like knight d4, for instance. Okay. It's not all is not lost, you know. Let's say here, rook e1. But you can see there's pressure on the on the position. I like this position for white. But just with uh, some simple, you know, general looking moves, um, you know, black can get in trouble here. Let's not make a move like b6. Even if play the move like e5, for example, that's probably be a little better. Then you could just take en passant. And then play a move like c4. Again, notice the pristine pawn structure of white. So moves like that are very dangerous, in my opinion, in this position, D, uh, early d5. And like I said, it's just an idea that I'm incorporating from the Sicilian defenses. Um, you see that in accelerated dragon uh, positions a lot. So after knight c7, Titian just developed, you know, in a kind of normal manner. Knight e2, nothing wrong with that. Bishop g7. <clears throat> and, um, sorry, I lost my spot here. Bishop g7, castle. D5, and so nothing wrong with the position. It just kind of let, to me, let Black off the hook a little bit. C3, solid enough, but very, um, very passive. Basically, you're letting Black set up how he wants to, and so the equality is guaranteed. If you don't put any pressure on the opponent at all, but some players like to just get you know their setup going their the position that they like and play from there and don't really concern themselves with trying to get any edge out of the opening or what have you sometimes this type of play can backfire sometimes when you let your opponent uh you know get away with too much and play too freely then he turns into you know like a kind of kind of like a you know like a, a evil pit bull or something you know that just uh you know kind of like you're, you're too friendly with them it's kind of like those lion tamers and they get too they get used to you know feeding in the animals and they're like look i stick my my face in the you know in the uh mouth of the lion and stuff like that you know and, and then one day that lion just clamps shut you know their mouth shut and uh, squishes the guy's you know head and stuff or, or the gorilla just snatches up snatches up the trainer you know, yeah, I know, bad analogy. But, yeah, what I'm saying is that sometimes if you let your opponent get away with too much, then he'll definitely, you know, then he'll, like, run you over, basically. And you kind of see that in this game. Like, white is really not putting any pressure on black. It's kind of letting black do what he wants to do. So after bishop e3, I'm sure Titian might have been just expecting castle right after all uh Vasyukov is 84 years old right he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't want to rumble in the jungle right he's not he's not uh, looking for a fight man the old old grandmaster tossed forward that h pawn and said i'm gonna rip the rip the king side open <laughs> so h5 that must have been a, a little surprise right there this in plays h4 Okay, so he stops that, but now nice square for the bishop to go to g4. Queen to d2. And queen to d7. And the position is uh, quite equal at this point. Um, even, uh, this is like a, a weird devel development to, to me. Like, it, I don't I don't like how the, the pieces look at all. Um... It looks laborious. A lot of a lot of maneuvering has to be done uh, to improve both sides. I like black sides, black's pieces a little bit better though. 
Knight f4, so Titian gets right on it. Right? He tries to improve the pieces. The old man, castles queen side. So he, he must have been in a bad mood or something. You know, he he's up for a fight. You know, he's just feeling it. Maybe, you know, he's feeling feeling like a youngster today. Knight d3, so we can see the purpose of the knight f4 move. Right, just putting the pieces where they got to go. And one thing I'll throw out there is that in closed positions, uh, piece location is um, is uh, more important because since the position is closed, usually a pawn structure is gonna you know be more static and stay fixed for a longer period of time. So a bad piece in a in a like closed position is like real you know really needs to be uh, fixed and put you know put in a good spot because with the pawns not really moving and being exchanged and such that piece will be bad you know for forever. Whereas in the open position. There's more maneuvering going on, and uh, it's, you know, pieces getting exchanged, they're swapped off, et cetera, like that. You don't really have to worry as much, but in the closed position, uh, piece location is definitely more important. King b8, and now the opposite wing attacks start. So b4, f6. A4, E5, finally finally, this knight comes out, knight A3, G5, okay, now it gets real risky, H takes G5, and we see some dynamic play from the old grandmaster, H4, he just wants to rip open uh, the king side, and again, if you don't know, in opposite wing attacks, sacrifices or normal the uh the initiative is what takes precedence over the uh material so if you have to sacrifice a pawn or even a piece to uh get your attack through on uh the side of the board that you're attacking in uh so be it and that's what we see here in order to be first uh Vasyukov uh sacrifices a pawn to get that h file open this forces white to play on the side of the board where he doesn't want to play. Remember, he played a4 and b4. Uh, White wants to press his attack over there, but he's been distracted by black, and now we can see the progress that black's attack has made on the other side of the board. f4. And now, to me, this shows how affected um, Peter Titian was because um, he completely uh, is... Um, consumed with with stopping black on this side of the board now and um and he has to because of the open files the attack has now reached dangerous proportions in a matter of a few moves so f3 for example at least gain some time in actually attacking the bishop so i say f3 bishop f4 and then knight c5 queen e7 game is still very much up for grabs knight b5 for example however instead of the move f3 f4 was played which doesn't gain at any time at all instead black's attack just keeps going e takes d4 c takes d4 f takes d4 now you have this double attack here Excuse me, F takes G5. So, Knight E5, right? Trying to use tactics to uh, use tactics to solve the, the problems at hand. Bishop takes E5. F takes E5. Knight E6. The problem still remains. Double attack here. Knight B5. Okay, attacking, uh, excuse me, protecting d4 along with the bishop. And bishop h3. Of course, perfectly fine was uh, rook uh, to h8. So bishop h3 is played. Now, knight d4. I'm sorry, not knight d4. Bishop, after bishop h3, 
Rook G, uh, this is H3, Knight D6. Knight hopped in to D6 first. Sorry about that. And now black is totally, well, black is already uh, better here. But now this move right here, um, black simply just played Rook G4 with this pin here. It's funny because usually a knight on a sixth rank like uh, with a good outpost like this is usually deadly for the opponent but it's just that <clears throat> white's king side is just totally exposed and ripped open that black has enough compensation that you know it doesn't even have to worry about this this knight because the knight is just by itself in this uh, particular situation rook f2 what else knight c takes d4 so now all of the, the tactics just flow in favor of the stronger side here. Bishop takes d4. Knight takes d4. And of course, not queen takes d4. Rook a3. Attack the bishop. Bishop g2. Rook takes g2. Now rook h8. And now rook... A G three and then the old grandmaster just simply played Queen H seven and won the game. And one of the ideas simply is if rook takes here then we just have a fork. So there's really um no defense uh after Queen H seven. And so that is it. I hope you enjoyed that game. Please uh like, subscribe, comment. Um Check out the links below. There are some uh, good um, books and uh, videos on, on the uh, Alicon Defense on all of my videos. Uh, I always feature some kind of uh, book or DVD on the particular opening system or systems that I refer to uh, during the video. And, uh, and if you also can, please support the channel uh, via donations. Um, greatly appreciate it. Um, I hope you enjoyed that game as much as I did. Again, uh, shout out and respect to 84-year-old uh, uh, Evgeny Vasyukov playing such a dynamic attacking game at a fast time control too. Uh, he really t he really took it to a grandmaster uh, Titian here. Usually you think of old guys playing, um, you know, the English opening or something like that, uh, trying to play some grind out positional game, but uh, he really uh, took it to White here in this game. Hope you enjoyed. See you soon on the next video.